Um, this is a short summary, uh, six minutes and 20 seconds uh, to be precise. It's intended to signpost a number of potential avenues for future research into the growth and development of female basketball. The diffusion of the game in the USA is, exam is examined through a number of cultural spheres of influence that prompted a series of divergent development pathways of the game, the sum of the parts creating the girls' game of basketball, or is it netball? The invention of basketball in 1891 was the solution to a problem of poor behaviour by a group of 18 male YMCA trainee secretaries. The 13 rules of the new game allowed for a degree of latitude in interpretation which popularised basketball with males and females, both as players and spectators. By 1895, female teacher training colleges could choose between two styles of the game. The boys' game remained faithful to Naismith's YMCA version of basketball, which, was, which grew in popularity with male participants in the education system and the workplace. The first pioneer of the girls' game was Clara Baird, who misinterpreted Naismith's court guide diagram. The result was a demarcation of female players' roles that was never intended, a regulation that exists to this day in the game of netball and the six-player game of basketball played in Iowa. <clears throat> the mother of uh, women's basketball, Senna Berenson, elected to alter Naismith's rules in keeping with contemporary attitudes towards female participation in sports. Berenson's versions of the game suited her girls at Smith College in that it promoted their efforts to, get, to gain a degree of emancipation through sport. Many teacher training colleges nationally followed their example. Just as the YMCA movement was effective in disseminating the male game nationally and internationally, it was the female teacher training students who dis disseminated the girls' game a game that was intended to promote the physical culture of exercise and team games played on personal, for personal and social development. The segregation of uh, ethnic groups within the US state education system deeply impacted upon the take-up of the game amongst females and males. Basketball was, uh, was to provide considerable social, cultural, economic, political, and aesthetic dimensions for many ethnic groups. For example, Native Americans. In 1904, a team from the Fort Shaw Reservation, Montana, became champions of the world by playing a series of games at the World Fair in St. Louis and at the 1904 Olympic Games. The success of the Native American team bizarrely provided confirmation that the white man's policy of assimilation was not only desirable, but possible. African Americans. The first recorded basketball game between two all-black women's basketball teams, the New York Girls and the Jersey Girls, took place on the 26th of February, 1910. Teams were forced to play in black-only dance halls due to the Jim Crow laws enforcing racial segregation from 1877 to the mid-1960s. Iowa's six versus six girls basketball. Small town Iowa uh, displayed America's social and cultural attitudes through their six v six game of basket, which flourished from 1893 to 1993. Whilst Iowa's major towns and cities played basketball, agricultural districts played basket. Ironically, Title IX of the 1972 Education Act contributed to the game's demise. The six-player game infringed gender equality laws with its gender-specific playing rules. The introduction of uh, female basketball, or was it basket or even netball, into England requires detailed study. Current research indicates that Madame Bergman Osterberg introduced a version of the girls game uh, to female PE students at her Hampstead Teacher Training College in 1893. By 1901, 
Bergman's students had established netball as a girls' game through the Ling Association, which was founded in 1899, firmly embedding the game in Britain's early 20th century middle-class leisure culture. Middle-class attitudes towards styles of play were mirrored in a north-south cultural divide, a cultural bias highlighted in this 1956 AENA publication that describes a clear regional bias in the status of netball in each of their nine administrative territories. The dominance of netball on the PE syllabus in England state schools and the influence of the Commonwealth countries in securing the game as an international sport have served netball well. However, if the American game of netball introduced in British variety theatres in May 1900 had become popular, the game as we know it may never have survived. This GB versus US series of commercially motivated challenge matches serves to further confuse any working definition of the game of basketball or netball. Influenced by the emancipation of Western middle-class women, Naismith's game with no name became two, ga two games, basketball and netball, each having their own unique identities. My preliminary conclusion is that the growth and development of uh, both games should be defined through their cultural spheres of influence as reflected in their rules of play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicely timed. We've got um, short on time for questions, but we have got time for questions. Who wants to start? Thank you. Lovely research, Mr. Where did you find it? Um, that invaluable um, resource called eBay. <laughs> 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 um, I've, uh, over the last three or four months, I've been uh, looking for books on um, women's basketball netball there isn't a great deal on netball um, but certainly women's basketball in the states uh, there's there's quite a lot uh, uh, that's been published um, not academic uh, publications but nevertheless they've been the starting point um, for this research and the next step is Yes, it is, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, the next step is for me to finish, uh, to go back to swimming and finish off my PhD. <laughs> Jean. Uh, and, uh, but the, um, I think the, 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 uh, the information that I've gleaned so far on basketball, originally I was going to look at um, cultural differences within the male game. Um, there's a fascinating story about uh, the Harlem Globetrotters uh, and how they started and, uh, and so on. Um, but I think that the information that I've gleaned so far on the women's game within the states, uh, for instance, the uh, Fort Shaw um, Indian Reservation uh, is a fantastic story and one that really does need to be told uh, because uh, I've just hinted at it in this, but there's an awful lot more there uh, that sort of illustrates that sport was being used um, to assimilate um, Native Americans into uh, the Western society. The boys were only allowed to play um, baseball and American <coughs> football, and the females were only allowed to play uh, the boys' game of basketball. Um, so there's, there's lots of interesting research to be done there. I'm afraid we're out of time, but I'm sure Keith won't mind talking uh, at the time mm -hmm. and so on about uh, his, his research. So thanks again, Keith. Okay, thank you.